Good morning. This is Bert Gonzalez. I am with Kame Americas in Miami Lakes. I am the business development manager, and we are presenting our bollards and roadblockers line of products. We welcome you. We hope to have many more of these types of presentations and webinars for you. Uh, this is our first English version, so please bear with us. We'll do our very best. Our technical manager, Mr. Jose Guillen, will be Hello, making everybody. the presentation. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Bert, for the presentation. You're welcome on board, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, again, at the end of the uh, presentation, we'll have a question and answer um, part. Uh, so please bear with us. Uh, wait until the end. Uh, get your questions ready and uh, our technical manager, Mr. Guillen, will answer them to his best of the ability. So uh, welcome on board. And uh, Zay, take over, sir. All right, thank you, Bertie, thank you. Uh, well, thank you everybody for, for attending today, taking the time to, to listen to our presentation. Today, we are going to talk about our bollards and road blockers. Um, let me see, okay, uh, just a second, let me find the right button for this. Okay, let's start with the definition, what is a bollard? So we need to understand first what we're talking about, so in that way we, you know, we, can, we can move forward, right? So a boiler is a, is a small, thick, um, could be a metal pole that is uh, embedded to the ground and it could be used to either control um, passage of vehicles, but either protect pedestrians and you can, it could be, it could be like, it's actually a device to, uh, can provide security, right? Again, accidents, again, you know, cars going over pe uh, people, uh, going into buildings and so forth. Uh, I was reading about the history about the bowlers. Um, originally, they came from from ports, right? When the ships back in the days, when the ships used to arrive to port, and they will use these 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 long uh, strings, and they we had to, they will attach these these cord these strings to to the to the bowler, right? So in that way, they will secure the ships to the to the port, and that will, you know, of course, they, they won't go away. Uh, where can where can we use these bollards? The bollards can be used to protect bridges, to protect on limited pedestrian area access, right? Of course, it's being used a lot in parking to protect parking, parking equipment, to protect um, yeah, parking equipment, uh, parts of the, the building itself. Um, customs, like for example, customs area, you know, um, certain area that this is not very common. High road, high road and highway, of course, to protect highways and, I mean, highway, no, to protect areas where the vehicles are going through. And these are different, uh, some of the applications that we're looking at here, like, for example, right here um, for our buildings, uh, pedestrian, protect, uh, uh, pedestrian areas, access ways, they can be, you know, connected to, a, to the uh, um, technical center, which manages the, uh, the access. And then we have another example here, uh, a building, for example, right? Um, here in Kame, we have uh, we just recently acquired. We already had a the Kame Group. We had the Kame uh, Orbaco, which was our main company for for bowlers. But recently, we acquired uh, Kame Osak, located in Turkey, which you know it was acquired with the idea to to expand not only our bowler division and road blockers, but also to strengthen our presence on, on pedestrian access. So we have uh, turnstiles and we have a, a half body turnstile and full body turnstile. So that could be another webinar that we can organize in the future. So we can show you this, this product line as well. So product line in bollards. So what do we have? We have access control and urban solutions and also we can call it high security solution or security solutions, just to give you an idea how more or less how we divide the market and how to present it to our customers. So just to mention, just to show you really quick how we have classified our product line, we're going to start with, uh, um, with automated retractable boilers, our most uh, sellable boilers, which basically these devices are, you know, this metal cylinder right here. They're connected to a technical center, which could be either a hydraulic or a pneumatic um, pump. And then with the use of these devices, we can actually open or, clo or close and access it completely automatic. We have the semi-automatic and also the BMM. We, we insert this ball on the semi-automatic um, classification, but I'll explain you why. The semi-automatic 
we need a key to release the baller. So with the user foot, we step on the baller and we open the access. So we have these two, uh, they, they work the same way. And then we have the mechanical baller, which is completely manual. So you have this handle right here, which allows you to uh, engage it. And then you will, you know, you will move, you will rise the baller. And if you need to free up the access, basically you disengage the lock and, and uh, open the, the access for, for, for people. Then we have the area for removable bollards. Then we have the fixed bollards, which are basically like the, uh, the name sets it. They are just fixed bollards, they're just right there. So you anchor those to the ground and basically they're, they're gonna, they will move anywhere. Then we have the removable post, which are basically about the same concept as a, uh, as a uh, uh, ball, uh, removable baller. However, these are, or a baller baller, but these are thinner. These are thinner and, and longer in, on, on dimensions. And then we have the fixed post as well. So basically, this this have no this these are the removal post and the post. They have no uh, crash rating, but basically for for the limiting uh, you know for, for limiting space for for pedestrians and vehicles. They have no uh, crash rating at all at all whatsoever. Um, and then on the part of the for to manage the automatic bollards, we have these different devices which are used to basically to, 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 to manage your baller. For example, the CD6. Uh, the CD6 is a, is a, is a torrent type uh, control center where we can have, uh, inside of this device, we can have PLCs. We can have access controls. Basically, from here, you could uh, get an access to the area that, that you are going to visit. I'll show you more or less how, how this is going to work, how the, setup, how the setup is. And then we have the CD1, which is, a, uh, you know, a, Basic version of the CD6 with less um, less space to to install your your access control devices, and then uh, we have the CD square which has all of the on uh, the traffic light, the two light for this to work as a traffic light, and also you could install a uh, an access control device right here, and then of course uh, the traffic light. And as a control devices, you know the imagination is the limit. You can have uh, long range RFIDs, uh, LPR readers. You could open, you know, if you have your cell phone, we have a, we have a, uh, um, we have a device called Kami Connect uh, Ethernet version. You can actually open and close gates through your cell phone, whatever you are. So that could be another option. We have the remote controls, contactless cards, intercom. You can call somebody in an office, say, listen, allow me to access the premises. And they will press in a button that will talk to the CD6 and the CD6 will lower the baller to grant you access to the premises. So we have the keypad also, you can enter a password and then that will um, allow you access to the premises. And last but not least, we have the delivery button. You, can, you could press that button right there and that will lower the ballers to grant you access to the premises. And we also have a Sigma 3, it's a software that will allow you, let's say for example, if you have, let's say to give an example, a, a universe, so right now it's very common, the, the smart city concept, right? So we can have with a, within one computer, we could control several baller access from one single place. That this software will allow us to do that. Okay. On the access control and urban solutions, we can, I'm gonna explain the different components what you can find on a uh, baller installation. First, of course, we're gonna find the ballers. In this case, we're showing number one right here. We have two ballers. Let's, let's take that those are automatically retractable. They're gonna, you know, when they wanna release, a, they wanna open the, the access road, they will go down. If you wanna close the area, they will go up. In this case, we're showing some you know, six, uh, G6 EVO with these, um, with these uh, diameters. We have a diameter of 250 centimeters and a height of seven, uh, 750 uh, millimeters. And in this case, they're saying that we have a, a built-in hydraulic pump. Yeah, we have an external and an internal hydraulic pump. So this is the, the molar that we'll be using on this sample. Then we have number two, we have the totem and control board. As I mentioned before, this could be a city six. In this city six, you can have the traffic lights indicating whether or not, uh, you know, with the lights. Uh, somehow signalizing, to showing the person, hey, it's red, stop, yellow, please go ahead. And then we have our, um, but we can install our access control, which will be number three and four. I already went ahead of the game. So with number three control devices, we could have a license plate reader. We could have a, uh, an intercom that you can actually call somebody and will release the bollards. You can have a, a keypad. I mean, any access control device that you wish to use, it will be installed here on the City 6. And then we have the signal device. As I mentioned, we have, a, we have a two lights with a red, of course, top, and then green, I mean yellow. 
system would mean go ahead and safety devices. Very, very important. The things that you see over here, those are ground loops. Ground loops are used to basically, when the vehicle is going through, that will not allow two bollards to go up, even if you're pushing the button. That's basically a safety feature that, you know, to avoid this type of situation. Imagine, you know, that nice little car is going through and then somebody presses the button by accident, bollard go up. That would be, uh, that would be some damage to that vehicle right there. So that's basically how you will find, um, but you can find on a, on a, on a configuration for, for a borders installation, right? So let's talk about our automatic bollards. And we're talking about, we're gonna, we're gonna bring in this case of both families. We're gonna mention both families of bollards. Remember, we have Kami Orbaco and we have Kami Alsa. So we have right now the boller, uh, the TVD. The TVD is basically, is designed for traffic control. The, these are moved only by hydraulic motorization. And the cylinder has a wall of five millimeter thickness. So it's, it's a five millimeter thick, the, the metal wall of the, of the device. These are used mostly for traffic control. There is no, uh, there's no crash rating on this. We haven't done any type of uh, rating, crash rating on these devices because they are meant only for, for traffic control. And measurements, we have two types of measurements. We have a diameter of uh, 220 millimeters as a, and a height of 500 millimeters. In the other case, we have a 220 millimeters diameter and, and a 600 millimeter height on these devices. Uh, the operation speed can go anything between 1.8 to 4, uh, up to 4 seconds on rise and fall, the time for rise and, and for, the device to, for the device to come down. How we control these devices, they are compatible with any access control system out there. So whatever you're using, whether it's a proximity reader, LPR camera, um, keypad, as long as we have a dry contact that we can close a contact, the boiler will come down and go up. I have to mention that um, we have the option to, to have a battery backup on these devices. And they know from, from factory, they come with a button with three buttons, up, stop, and down. But you can have, if you wanna add any other uh, option, we're you know, more than welcome to use them and we'll customize the solution for you. All right, now we're gonna talk about our G6, generation six from Kami or Baco. This is Bowler, uh, for this Bowler, we have a different type of motorization. Remember, the, the one before, the one that we showed before, the CVD from our family OSAT, is only a hydraulic Bowler. In this case, um, we have our hydraulic, but hydraulic could be internal. We can have an internal pump installed inside the, inside the body of the Bowler. We could have an external pump, which could be located away, and then we have pneumatic. We can have a pneumatic um, pump uh, rising the boiler on, you know, letting it go down. So we have those. Uh, uh, we have those. Yeah, we can say three, two kind of hydraulic and plus the pneumatic. And these boilers, they have some sort of crash rating on this. Uh, these are tests that we perform in factory. They have depending on the diameter and height, we have two different uh, impact energy. For example, the boiler with a 200 millimeters and 750, 200 millimeters diameter and 750 millimeter high, they can withstand the impact of, of 96.1 kilojoules. We're looking at a, a vehicle of a 2.5 ton going at a more or less, uh, just to give you a, a reference, more or less a 40, I don't know, I want to say close to between 30 and 40. Uh, kilometers per hour, something like that. And then the boiler for the 250 millimeter diameter and 750 millimeter high, it can withstand an impact of 241,000 joules. The cylinder, of course, it has a wall thickness thicker than the last one. It's uh, an 11 millimeter thickness. It can go up and down between, between it, the speed will go anything between five and seven seconds. And again, it's compatible with any access control out there. And for these boilers, they are available in any real scale colors. Uh, I don't know if you want somebody who wants the boiler on a uh, Foxia or some, some color, you can always tell us, we provide you with a real scale. You tell us the color models that you want. And based on that, we can actually, um, we can paint the boiler the way you want it. All right, and let's gonna show you our G6 Evo, our G6 Evo, these bollards are, um, they also have uh, the same motorizations that we shared with the previous family, hydraulic and pneumatic. For the hydraulic, we have the external, but also the internal pump. 
you might ask me, well, Jose, when I'm, when I'm, when am, am I going to use either or? The difference is space, basically. If you have enough space to install an external pump, you can actually go ahead and we can provide you the quote with the external pump. However, if you have an installation where limited, I mean, where space is very limited and you have no space at all whatsoever to install your hydraulic pump, we can always go ahead and use the, the internal hydraulic pump. Now, in the case of pneumatic, also, I'm going to answer that question. That's another question that we get asked a lot. When do we use pneumatic or when do we use hydraulic? Pneumatic is basically, remember, we have a, we have a, we have a compressor, an air compressor that's going to be filled up with air to basically, to, to basically rise, to rise the boiler. So if we're going to have a point where there's an access point or an access area or an entrance that's going to be used very, very often, we have to go hydraulic because the liquid is going to be always there. Now, with the pneumatic, there's a, there is a, there's a limitation right there because, you know, if we rise the boiler five, six times, one after another one, after another one, the pump is going to run out of air. So, and then the compressor is going to have to fill up that, that tank. So it's going to take some time to fill up the tank and then, you know, uh, rise the boiler. So we don't want that to happen. So, and that's when you use the, the pneumatic boiler when the access, you require some automation. However, it's not going to be used as often. All right, um, good thing about the G6 Evo. So G6 Evo, you see these three sleeves right here. The beauty of these guys is that we can exchange this leaf. We can exchange this leaf. We can have a, uh, a sleeve with the RAL colors. We can paint the, uh, any RAL color that you wish to have. We have the stainless steel option, and we have the customized version. So you can have a customized version for this, uh, for this polar right here. Basically what you do, you remove each one of these screws that you see over here, you remove this cover, you remove these two rings and then you can actually remove the whole the whole um sleeve and then that will take you no more than 10 minutes to make this replace and i mean i'm exaggerating it won't take too much to change this this uh this leaf it uh, the cylinder wall is about 100 uh, 11 millimeter thick uh, thickness the same basically the same operation speed between five and seven seconds depending that depends on the amount of water that we have on the on the installation and then again they're stronger than our previous family they both can take an, an impact well actually yeah they both take the impact of a 250 millimeter i mean the 250 millimeter diameter by 750 they take the 200 uh, 241,000 kilojoules and then again they are compatible with any access control that we can see out there just going to show you basically here the different components of the of the um of the g6 evo waller this is how it looks without the sleeve, kind of ugly, but you know, when you put the sleeve on it, it it's going to light it nicer. We have the sleeve for the, that we can, you know, that you wish to paint on any dry color, that would be the sleeve. And then we have the stainless steel leaf, and the sleeve, I'm sorry. And then we have the custom cover for the boiler. And right here, we can see the different components of our boiler. So we have the hydraulic spin, it could be hydraulic, or could be pneumatic, depending on the type of boiler that you wish to have. Then you see all the structure of the boiler itself. In this case, we're showing you right here the um, the hydraulic, the built-in hydraulic pump, and then on this side we're going to have an upper limit uh, and a lower limit, basically to tell us when the water is up or when the water is down. And also we have uh, other electronic components, like for example a, a, a switch, we can say, that can actually let oil in or let oil out. So in that way, you know, the boiler goes up or down. In that case, in case of pneumatic, I mean hydraulic. And we can have it for for pneumatic as well. And then I'm going to show you a few samples of the different uh, interchangeable covers, just to give you an idea how you can, you know, ima again, imagination is a limit. If you, for example, for a city that have a uh, different event during the, year, during the year, you can actually get three different sleeve for that for that case, and you can change it according to the occasion that you are celebrating or you wish to celebrate. Okay, let's move now to our semi-automatic boilers. Why do we say semi-automatic? Because it's basically like that. So we need, um, we need a key to release the boiler. We use our foot to open the access. We, locked, we lock the, the boiler on the lower position, and then we leave the boiler for as long as we want. Then when we come back, we just basically unlock the boiler, and it will go automatically by itself. They have... They basically they share the same uh, features uh, yeah, as, as the previous family. And these boilers are designed 
for uh, access that are most of the time closed because they have an, an air cylinder inside, right? So if you leave the boiler for, for a long, really long time on the lower position, the air cylinder is gonna damage. So we don't want that to happen. So these boilers are designed for access roads that are gonna be most of the time closed because of that uh, I just mentioned, okay? Uh, they're both also part of the county or backup family. Now, on the other hand, we have the manual retractable. This boiler right here, you can see this handle. Basically, we insert the, the, the handle on the top of the boiler, release, we rise, we rise, uh, we rise the boiler, lock it up, and close the access. Once you want to open the access back up, basically it's the same key, unlock and let it go down. It's completely mechanical, so your hand, will, your, hand your, your strength will be the, the mechanism to move this type of boiler. We have, a, again, we have a, uh, this is designed for, for, or it's intended for access areas that are normally open, normally open, occasional use. When you want to close the access, just basically with your hand, uh, rise the boilers and you close your access. Um, the dimension that we have for this boiler is 200, uh, 200 millimeter for diameter and 640 millimeters of high. The wall is made out of uh, steel and also it has a four millimeter thickness. Both belong to the camera back of family and these shapes right here, those are the different keys that you can find that you can actually special order to uh, if you wish to have a different uh, shape of the key that you're going to install. In the removal boilers, we have uh, for the Kame offset, we have this type of removal boilers. We have our, it could be our, our fixator, let's call it that way. This is a part that goes underground, that is attached to the ground. And then you have the boiler right here. You have a locking mechanism that you unlock the mechanism and you remove your boiler, use the lid, cover the, the, the area, and then you can actually uh, access your, the, 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 the access point, let's call it that way. And this is designed, it's designed for occasional opening uh, of engines. We have two different sizes of uh, this type of boiler, but if you wish to uh, order a different size, it's, it's always, we can always add the factory and make it special, make it for you. We have the diameters are 100 millimeter or 324 millimeters, and then we have the heights of 500 millimeters and then 1200 millimeters. So that would be 100 millimeter diameter, 500 millimeter high, or the other case, it will be 324 millimeter diameter and 400 millimeter, millimeter high. They are made out of cast iron with a four millimeter thickness wall. And they are also available on different rag colors. I figured, no, don't, don't be scared. You know, it's an orange that is it's very, um, it's very colorful. However, you can have a different, different color if you wish to, 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 to offer that option as well. And then let's talk about fixed boilers. Our fixed boilers, these are made out of cast iron. These are our Kami Osa. Basically, this area that you see over here is the area that's gonna go underground, right? You have two different uh, dimensions for this type of boiler. We have 220 millimeters diameter by, uh, and also 324 diameter, plus a height of 500 or 1200 millimeters. So we can make a combination of this, this, this boiler they wish you, they wish you, you want to have it um, of course these are designed for places where vehicle passage is not allowed it's not allowed and we're closing completely the area um, it can be ordered on different colors as well if you wish we can always uh, have different colors and also different type of uh, speakers uh, here to, to um, show the boiler right there then we have on, on the fixed boiler we have the g6 and the g6 evo as well so we have for this for these boilers they are made also of uh, 111 millimeter thickness cast iron. They, we have two different dimensions for this type of water, 250 millimeter diameter by 500 millimeter high. And then we have the 250 millimeter diameter by 750 millimeter high. Uh, the design for the G6 is cylinder. This is what we call the cylinder model. This is, uh, you can have it on this, I mean, for the, for the G6. This would be the, the only shape that you can get. However, you can change the color as we mentioned before. And for the G6 Evo, you can have the cylinder, right? This type of uh, design. But you can, have the, you can have it on stainless steel. And as well, remember, we can always do the, the custom cover. And for the G6 Evo, we can install LEDs. If you, uh, if you wish to have LEDs on this area of the boiler, we have that option available as well. 
And of course, once again, they are designed for areas where vehicle passage is not allowed. And the way we, we will install these devices will be by having this area underground. And you can actually install a rebar over here to make it more, you know, make it steadier. And to make it steady. Again, there's no crash rating on these guys. They're meant to be for, for just basically just not, you know, limiting spaces or telling cars, no, don't go through here. These, these boilers right here, they have no crash rating at all whatsoever. And then removal of pulse, there's not much that we can say about it. It's basically this metal cylinder. So, you know, this will be uh, the Mistral and the Van Damme. The Van Damme is basically a uh, stainless steel. And this is just to show you a sample how they are basically to limitate access between pedestrian access and vehicle access. Again, no crash rating. No crash rating is offered in this type of bollards. Now, let's talk about high security uh, bollards. Right here, we have a with a Kamehameha family. We have a different. Uh, we have different uh, two type of high security bollards. We have the HPD, which is high security. And then we have the RBD, which is reinforced boiler. And then we also have the fixed boilers. We're gonna talk about those uh, briefly. The reinforced boiler, they are designed for type of medium level security is required. They came within the impact support of an M30, case, uh, M30, which is equivalent, equivalent to a K4, which translates into a 6.8 ton vehicle traveling at 48 kilometers per hour, which model is about 30, I'm gonna say about 30 miles per hour, something like that. That's about uh, the, the, the speed. Uh, then we have an opening speed of 2.5, between 2.5 and 5 seconds. Then the dimensions that we have available are diameters. We have 270 and 320. And the height would be anything between 700 or 900 millimeters of high. Then for these guys, the only motorization for these devices would be hydraulic. Only hydraulic for this guy, for this type of boiler. And then this is the, 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 the energy or the electricity that we would need to power up the, the, the hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump in this case. As I mentioned before, they come with, uh, with uh, the hydraulic pump, the boilers, as well as up and down and stop button. However, if you wish to have, if you wish to have more accessories, like some, for example, a traffic light, a uh, uh, remote control, or the access control, we can always custom make the solution for you. We can provide you with a full solution that uh, you wish to implement. Now, in this case, uh, we're gonna look at the heavy duty boiler from our Kame Osak family. Um, designed for the, for sites where the high level, highest level security is required, not only for the, for the automated version, but also for the fixed version right here. And they can withstand the impact, the equivalent M50 or K12, which is equivalent to a 6.8 ton vehicle traveling at an 80 kilometers per hour. And also we have another version that we could be, could be a K8, a, a lower impact, um, lower impact uh, energy, which could be 6.8 ton vehicle traveling at 64 kilometers per hour. Again, for the automated version, is uh, the only motorization that we have for these devices is uh, hydraulic, no pneumatic available for this. And then we have these two models over here. You can see we have the shallow, for shallow installation, and then we have for, you know, for, for areas where you can actually dig a bigger hole, or other, yeah, dig bigger hole, and then we can um, install these type of guys for deep or shallow installations. It's basically the difference in, in one of them, each one of them. Uh, for the automatic version, we have an opening speed that can go be anything between 2.5 and 5 seconds, but also we have what we call the EFO, which is the version that, you know, we have an, uh, like, a, like a turbo, let's call it that way, that will rise the boiler in less than a second. That's another option that we can, that is, that we can provide if, if it's needed in the, in the project that you're working for. We also have the dimensions, again, 207 millimeters. Uh, for diameter or, and also 320 millimeter diameter with a uh, height of 700 or 900 millimeters accordingly. One more time, the automated version is compatible with any access control right there, that, right there that you wish to implement. And the molars are certified right here. And the certificate, the certificate is available upon request. So our molars are certified. They've been tested and they've been approved and you know, certified to the ASTM standard. And as I mentioned before, our fixed boilers are for deep and shallow installations. Now let's talk about our Kame, um, 
are coming or back all high security borders. So let's go, we're going to talk about we have a G30, which is a it's, it's crash rated. This boiler can withstand the impact of a 2.5 vehicle traveling at 48 kilometers per hour. It will stop this pickup truck right there on the spot. However, the boiler won't be able to work again. It will stop the vehicle, but it's not going to work again. But this is our, you know, let's, let's call it the low, lower, lower level. Then moving forward in the scale, we have our one family. So we have 130, 140, and 150. Those are our, our Kami or Baco high security boilers. So for the 130s, you can see it's, it's equivalent to a K4 uh, to a K4 um, rating, and it can this will withstand. It's, these are certified to a different standard. You can see here, but again, it's equivalent to the to what we call the K the K4, and this water will stop a, a 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 48 kilometers per hour. Same with a 140, 64 kilometers per hour. Uh, this the same vehicle, a 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at this uh, speed. And also our 150 is uh, will stop this 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. All right, let's talk about our, our, our G30. We only have one dimension for this for this model, and it's 250 millimeter diameter by 750 high. We have the um, it's the design for basically where you know where we require a low. Um, Low level of security, as you can see, the truck right here it makes some damage, so this, this truck didn't go anywhere. But of course, the water won't go, out, won't, won't work again. So it, it, once it gets hit, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna stop right there. Uh, for these guys, we have, the, we have the option for hydraulic motorization, and it's embedded. So the embedded, uh, embedded hydraulic pump. We only have that model for these guys. And then again, it will take the impact of a 2.5 ton vehicle traveling at 48 kilometers per hour, and uh, we can actually have the custom made sleeve for this guy if needed. Now let's talk about a 130 uh, series. We have it on three different types. We have it on automatic, right? We have it on removable, which is not the version right here. This is a removable one. And then we have the fixed one. So we have the three options, automatic, removable, and fixed. And the motorization for these boilers, again, is only hydraulic because of the weight of the of the cylinder itself, we, we have to move it with hydraulic pumps or the pneumatic won't work for that. Um, as mentioned before, they will take the impact of a 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 48 kilometers per hour. Dimensions, 250 millimeters diameter for a thousand uh, millimeters high. Available in different rod colors, but also you can have this the, the sleeve custom made as you can see over here, you have the, the, the sleeve that can be painted on any dry color, stainless steel, or your custom-made sleeve. These are our, this made out of a high-resistant steel, and these are the certifications that these bowlers uh, have, and they are also available upon request. Moving to our next category, which is our 140 uh, bowlers. These are also, they fall into our high security category. Again, we have the three different families. We have the um, full automatic boiler. We have the removable boiler, as well as the fixed boiler. Uh, they can withstand the impact of a uh, 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 64 kilometers per hour. Uh, the dimension for these guys is right here, 250 for 700 millimeters, available in different rad colors. All right, and options as well, uh, the, the, the sleeve for the, for the different colors, stainless steel leaf and custom made sleeve as well, made out of high resistant steel. And again, these are the two certifications that these bowlers have, and this is available upon request. Now our strongest bowler on the Kame or Baco family, we have the 150. The 150 is also, once again, available on automated version. We have the removable version as well as the fixed version. Oh, and now the, the motorization, once again, is hydraulic. It will take the impact of a 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. Dimensions 325 millimeter diameter by 1000 millimeters high. Same, uh, the design, same as before. We have the, the sleeve for to be painted in different colors. We have the stainless steel sleeve, and then we have the custom made uh, sleeve if, if needed. 
and these are made these are made out of really really high resistant steel and both certification are once again available upon request now i'm going to show you i mentioned before that's going to show you how more or less this, this solution goes right uh, as a promise um i uh, i have the molars right here we have the molars right here the automated version so we have the automated version molar, which could be 130, 140, 150, depending on the, which family you wish to use. Then we have the technical center. We could have an external pump, which are these two right here, and we have all the different electronics and the electric devices. We have the PLC. The PLC could be controlled. This, this computer could be installed right here on the, on the, on the external um, pump, or in case that we have an internal pump installed on this molar, we can have this, uh, this uh, computer installed inside the command center. So basically, here would be your keypad, your um, proximity reader, perhaps a QR as well. And then from here, if you're granted the access, if we if we, we can either go straight to the wallets and from here and tell them, listen, go up or down, depending on the case, or this uh, command center could be connected to the technical center where we have the pumps and the pump. You know, the pump will either inject or retrieve oil, depending on the case. If you want to let people in or let people out. This is basically the, uh, just the different components that we can have on a uh, boiler installation. Now, we're going to talk about road blockers. We also offer different uh, type of road blockers for protection of, of sensitive areas. Let's talk about our uh, strongest uh, road blocker. Design where, these are designed for, for sites that where the highest level of security is required. Okay. So this is the certification that um, that um, the boiler, uh, the road blocker has. We have what we call the V shape. The V shape is basically if the vehicle hits this uh, elliptical area, of course, it's going to bend this metal over here. But the the, the, the vehicle that hits it is going to get stuck over here, so it won't go over our our road blocker. And these hooks over here, they're meant to support when the vehicle hits it. It's these hooks over here that basically will grab the uh, the structure of the device, so in that way the vehicle won't go anywhere past this area over here. So they can take the impact of a uh, either MK or K12 uh, um, rating, and which translates into 6.8 ton traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. This is a high security uh, road blocker. These are no other option but hydraulic motorization and they are compatible with any access control system that you can find right there. They are available on different uh, width. So it's basically, if you want to uh, order one of it, we need to know the, how wide the access row is so we can actually uh, provide the right solution for you. We have different, different um, width for these devices. And for the uh, ability to provide this type of electricity in order to uh, power up the hydraulic pumps, either three phase 380, or we have the option for 220, uh, uh, or some cases 120 volts only for some models, not available for all of them. As I mentioned before, we have the different uh, dimensions right here. We can show you different dimensions. It's, it's important to know the width of the probe locker so we can provide the right solution for you. And as I mentioned before, like I was, I was mentioning, we have these um, other products, they have the semi elliptical area. We have the V shape right here. So when you hit, when that vehicle hit, our road blocker is gonna. There's, there's no way that it's gonna go uh, beyond our our road blocker. That's basically. That's why we have this V shape right here. Okay. We also have. We also offer the when when we have a when we're limited by the how deep can we go on the installation. We also offer. Some road blockers that's just called uh, surface mount. Look right here. We, as long as we have about a 250 millimeter space, we can you know dig a hole and install a road blocker. We should be good to go. So we can actually install this road blocker on existing uh, existing buildings that they already have. Perhaps they might have some some pipes or, or something running under. As long as we can grant at least 250 millimeter uh, space, we can actually install these uh, road blockers. These are part of the also cameo set family, and they are this also um, this our high security uh, road blocker for the shallow uh, installations. 
they could withstand the impact of a vehicle traveling uh, of a, the equivalent of a, of a K-12, which is a 6.8 ton traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. However, tests haven't been, haven't been done yet. Is the test is, is, is pending, but it's been designed to withstand that, that type of impact. Again, the full-scale full scale, uh, crash test is pending. And then, again, like I mentioned before, the cyber uh, depth is a limitation. For this guy also, there's only hydraulic motorization. And then we can offer solutions for to cover areas between one and six meters of width. And then, once again, the power, it could be either 380, three phase, two, uh, 220, or perhaps some models that may, we might have available for, for 120. Now I'm gonna show you a couple uh, videos showing the the crash test of our of our road blocker. This is basically showing the the civil work that has to be done in order to to install this type of uh, road blockers. As you can see, there's quite some some work to be done in terms of construction. And that's how the test is being done to these vehicles. Now we're gonna see it on slow motion. Right there. I'm gonna make a pause right here. I'm gonna make some mention something that is, is worth mentioning. Our our our, uh, our devices are certified, not only certified to that standard, but also they have a P1. P1 is called penetration. How how deep can how deep the vehicle went? So in this case, we are P1, which is the minimum, which is the minimum that we can offer. So no vehicle, basically almost nothing is gonna access. As you can see, our road blocker is going back to work. We will just have we will have to replace just the front cover, and your de your device will go back to work again. What happened? Got disconnected. Can you hear me? Heard. Yeah, I got disconnected. We, no, no, I can hear you. We lost you for a minute there, Jose. Yes, I, I got disconnected uh, briefly. Okay. Let me just restart the video. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason I got disconnected. Okay, let's go back again with the video. And that's how the, the test is, is done. And then we're going to see the degree of penetration. That's very important. It's not only that we are certified to that standard, but also we need to know how deep that vehicle went so we can, we can stay that on, on our, on our uh, certificate, uh, certificate calibration certificate or certification. Uh, on the certificates.
in a game, we have a P1 less than a meter penetration. So the vehicle didn't go over a meter. So we not only were certified to that standard, but also there's a P1. So it didn't go beyond, the vehicle didn't go over a meter. So we can offer you the highest um, protection with, with our waters. Now, do uh, you have any questions? The session is open. Jose, let me, let me say a few words, if I may, uh, and then we'll open it to question and answers. So everyone get ready, uh, and we'll be with you shortly on your questions. Um, as you can see, and thank you for a presentation that was very technical. Uh, every time I see it, I, I learn something new from you, uh, and you're very qualified. Um, what I want to say is, as you can see uh, from watching Jose speak about how technical all these equipment and product is, my suggestion is, and you'll have that information available to you, is when you have your prospect, your sales potential, you need to get as much information about the particular installation that you're going to be doing. There's a lot of constraints. Distance, for example, in the bollards, so you have a real secure area. You need to know about how to install it, so the installation must be very technical with the cement and the rebar and so forth. You can get all that from us. So get as much information at the time of your inquiry with your customer and then come to us and we will help you. We will have the supporting catalogs, the videos, the manuals, the technical information to provide to you. So we'll be there with you at the time of the closing. But you need to know what you're going to be doing. That way you avert problems in the future with your customers and with the product itself. There's so much variations of product, as you can see. Uh, just alone in the roadblock, uh, roadblock series, there's over 50 variations, particular from the size and the height of the equipment. It's very flexible. You will also have the availability, depending on the criteria and the specific product that you sell, to prove to your customers that these are certified for crash tests and we have that information for you. In the Roadblocker series, we have a residential model, we have the mid-tier, the RRB, and then we have the heavy duty, which could be, as Jose mentioned, very shallow mount where you have, you cannot dig as deep as you would in other instances for a, a more secure area. So um, there's variations in, 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 in the opening and use of these roadblockers. You have the open, the close, and the stop. You do have an emergency uh, button to stop in case there's any faults. Um, so saying all this is that you need to have your clear information from your prospect of what he wants. And there we will help you to close the deal. And uh, as you can see, we have all sorts and types of products high-end, mid-end, and low-end, and we have two manufacturing plants that have more than enough experience and production capability to, to help you with. And that's all I wanted to, to say, uh, Jose. I'm sorry I didn't uh, uh, get into your presentation, but it was very technical and, 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 and oh. very good. No, so. Thank you. Thank you for the information you're adding there. I think I appreciate it. Uh, well, I don't see any, any questions. Uh, so anyways, I just want to thank you for, for taking the time on your busy schedule and and attend to this webinar. We're going to be doing more of this. Um, this is our, our first attempt, right, on the on the U.S. market. But we got it. more webinars are coming, so we're going to keep on sending invitation. Please stay tuned, and then uh, we have a lot to talk about our, our different product families. We we will be preparing a webinar spec sheet for dates and times on specific products in the near future, and we will avail this information to you very very shortly. So thank you. My name is Bert Gonzalez, Business Development Manager at Kame Americas, Jose Guillen, our Technical Manager, and uh, please give us a call. We'll be glad to answer any of your concerns. Anytime, Diane. You're welcome, Diane. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.